Hegel, uh, he came up with his theory of dialectics that influenced Darwin and Karl Marx. Marx was a member of the Young Hegelians, a radical student group at the University of, of Berlin. So Hegel's, his dialectics is a triangle. One corner is a thesis, the opposite corner is an antithesis or antithesis, and the top corner is a synthesis. It sounds complicated, but it's not. In other words, you start off with the status quo, you create a problem that's real bad, and everybody's happy to settle for your answer that's half as bad. <laughs> then that becomes the new starting point. You create another problem that's real bad, and everybody's happy to settle for your answer that's half as bad. And that becomes the new starting point. Then you create another problem that's real bad, and everybody's happy to settle for your answer that's half as bad. And each time they settle, the people give up a little more of their freedom, and it's reconcentrated into the hands of the state. Right? You have to get them into fear. And when people are in fear, they will trade freedom for security. So let's, let's create a crisis. Now, how do you create this antithesis, this uh, Karl Marx that you send in agitators, agent provocateurs, community organizers, labor organizers? Their job is to find people with grievances, stir them up to riot. And then when the whole country gets in fear and panic, then you come along promising to restore order and you usurp power. So... Um, he called it critical theory, critical economic theory, critical racial theory. And so you would study a country and see the groups. Yeah. And then you would call one victims and the other oppressors. One the haves, the other have-nots. And then you would orchestrate the protests and riots and so forth. And then when it was destabilized and fearful enough, everybody panics. And that's when they usurp power promising to fix it. And so... Originally, he was organizing the proletariat against the bourgeois, which is the working class against the business owners. Or they would organize the poor against the rich, or the blacks against the whites, or the Catholics against the, against the Protestants, or the Muslims against the Christians, even the Hutus against the Tutsis in the Congo and Rwanda. Sort of interesting. In Rwanda, they saw themselves as one, but when the British came in and were colonizing, they would like measure the heads and the heights of different, and they say, you're a Hutu and you're a Tutsi. They, they literally created racial distinctions where there was none there before. And then they stirred them up so the one began to butcher and kill the other one. Imagine creating groups just for the sake of pitting them against each other. So Castro said in Cuba, he says, the revolution needs the enemy. The proletariat does not flee from the enemy. It needs the enemy. The revolutionary needs his antithesis, which is the counter-revolutionary. If enemies were lacking, they had to be fabricated. In other words, you can't organize your people against something if, if there's nothing to organize against. You've got to have an enemy to organize against. And so how did this begin to come to America? 